the ideal jet propulsion cycles. What is an ideal jet propulsion cycle? Jet propulsion. The term jet propulsion refers to the action produced by a reactor to the ejection of matter, an engine that burns fuel and uses the expanding exhaust gases, turn a turbine and produce thrust. The concept of thrust is based on the principle of Newton's third law which state when one body exists a force on a second body, the second body simultaneously exists a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction on the first body. From that, we can define jet propulsion as the propulsion of an object in one direction produced by ejecting a jet of fluid in the opposite direction. By Newton's third law, the moving body is propelled in the opposite direction to the jet. Basic components of a turbojet engine Schematic of turbojet engine First component in turbojet engine is the diffuser. Second is the compressor, third is the burner, fourth is the turbine, and the last one is nozzle. How does it work? How a jet engine work? Jet engines move the airplane forward with a great force that is produced by a tremendous thrust and cause the plane to fly very fast. Jet engine with breaker cycle with a diffuser on the front and nozzle on the back and it is the focus to increase the velocity and give thrust through the nozzle to propel the aircraft forward. Now we are going to see the process on how the jet engine works. Firstly, we can see that diffuser is the first component in the engine core. Through the diffuser, air is going to come in to the inlet and its pressure of air intake rises slightly as it decelerates in the diffuser and then it's going to hit the compressor. Next, in the compressor, its job is to raise the pressure of incoming air by compressing the air. It needs to do that in order to heat the air up and it's burn better when the pressure is high. So, once the air is pressurized, it is then forced into the combustion chamber. Next, we are going to see it in the fuel burner. In the fuel burner, fuel is mixed with the air and electric sparks like the air causing it to combust. First, we are going to see in the combustion chamber. The air is mixed with the fuel and then ignited. There are as many as 20 nozzles to spray fuel into the air stream. The mixture of air and fuel will catch fire and provides a high temperature and high energy airflow. When the temperature of air increase, thus the pressure inside the engine will increase. The combustion causes the air and fuel mixture to rapidly expand which is going to force the air out through the turbine. Next, the high energy airflow coming out of the combustor goes into the turbine causing the turbine blades to rotate. The turbines are linked by a shaft to turn the blades in the compressor and to spin the intake fan at the front. The blades gain the high energy flow from the hot gases moving past through them and that energy is used to drive a fan and the compressor. This turbine is now taking the power that the burner is created. Next, in the nozzle, the nozzle is one of the exhaust duct of the engine. This is the engine part which actually produces the thrust with hot air. The nozzle may be proceed by a mixture which combines the high temperature air coming from the engine core with the lower temperature air that was bypassed in the crank. At the end, 
the hot air rush out the nozzle with a very high speed. Now we can see the figure. From the figure, we can tell that the synchronized operation of the compressor, combustion chamber, and turbine makes the aircraft move forward. Craft and formula. The basic craft for either turbulent cycle can be constructed from the temperature T versus the entropy S. From state 1 to 2, it occurs in diffusion, which decelerates the incoming flow relative to the engine. A pressure rise known as a ram effect occurs, which means when velocity decreases, the pressure increases. It can be explained through the Bernoulli's equation, where pressure plus half rho v squared plus rho g h equal to constant. Next, from state 2 to 5, it occurs in compressor, burner, and turbine. From state 2 to 3, it is isotropic compression. From state 3 to 4, it is constant pressure heat addition. From state 4 to 5, it is isotropic expansion through the turbine during which work is developed. Turbine power just enough to drive the compressor. Air and fuel are mixed and burned in the combustion chamber at constant pressure. Air velocity within the turbine is small and can be neglected. From state 5 to 6, it occurs in the nozzle, where isotropic expansion through the nozzle, air accelerates and the pressure decreases. Gases leave the turbine significantly higher in pressure than atmospheric pressure. Gases are expanded to produce a high velocity, which velocity exceeds much higher than velocity inlet, result in a thrust. The pressure at the inlet and the axis of a turbojet engine are identical, which P inlet equal to P axis, and this is known as the ambient pressure. Thus, the net thrust developed by the engine is force equal to rate of mass multiplied by the velocity exit minus rate of mass multiplied by the velocity inlet. Factorize the equation, we get rate of mass multiplied by the velocity exit minus velocity inlet, and the SI unit for force is in Newton. For an aircraft cruising in still air, the inlet is the aircraft velocity. The power developed from the thrust of the engine is called the propulsive power and it can be defined from the formula rate of power P equal to force multiplied by the velocity of aircraft equal to rate of mass multiplied by the velocity exit minus the velocity inlet multiplied by the velocity aircraft and the unit for Propulsive power is in kilowatt. Propulsive efficiency. The thermal efficiency is defined based on the propulsive power, which means to get the efficiency of a turbojet engine, we first have to find the propulsive power. This then becomes a measure of how efficiently the energy released during the combustion process is converted to the propulsive energy. The formula to get the efficiency of propulsive is the propulsive power which is the benefits over the input energy. Modification to turbojet engine Turbojet engine has four modification. First, after burner, turboprop, turbofan and ramjet. Afterburner Afterburner is popular in military aircraft and it is used whenever a need for extra thrust arrives, such as for short takeoff or combat condition. This then becomes a measure of how efficiently the energy release during the combustion process is converted to the propulsive energy. This is a schematic diagram for a turbojet engine with afterburner. You can see the diffuser here, compressor, burner, turbine, and here we can see the afterburner region before the nozzle. This is 
TS diagram for ideal turbo jet cycle and this is the diagram for ideal turbo jet cycle with afterburner cycle you can see it's differ here 0.5 to the 0.6 we can see the temperature rise next is turbo pro gas turbine drive the compressor and the propeller most of thrust is from the propeller works by accelerating large volume of air to moderate velocities propeller are best suited for a low speed less than 500 mile per hour flight bypass ratio is 100 over 1 or more bypass ratio is equal to the mass flow bypassing the combustion chamber of a mass flow tool bypassing chamber next is turbo fan the most popular engine in aircraft is the turbo fan or fan jet where fan drive by the turbine force a considerable amount of air through a duct surrounding the engine turbo fan is best choice for fuel economy and speed high speed exhaust gases are mixed with the lower speed in air in the bypass resulting in a considerable noise reduction bypass ratio can be adjusted bypass provide thrust for takeoff the core provide thrust for cruising typically used for speed up to 600 mile per hour typical bypass ratio are 5 to 6 we go to ramjet ramjet is properly shaped duct with no compressor or turbine ramjet is used for high speed propulsion and missile compression is achieved by decelerating the high speed incoming air in the diffuser aircraft must already be in flight at high speed flying above Mach 2 or 3 in a ramjet the air is slowed down to about Mach 0.2 fuel is added to the air and burned at this low velocity and the combustion gases are expanded and accelerated in a nozzle we can see here ramjet is different from scramjet by their shape and this is the liquid rocket engine so now we will discuss about the difference between the jet propulsion cycle and the brighton cycle so we go to the first difference the first difference is the gases expanded to a pressure such that the power produced by the turbine is just sufficient to drive the compressor and the auxiliary equipment. But for Brighton cycle, the gases are expanded to the ambient pressure in the turbine. So the next difference is jet propulsion cycle has six process, but for Brighton cycle only has four process. This is the graph that my teammates have explained before. So the third difference is that propulsion cycle is an open cycle but for Brighton cycle, it also open cycle but also can model as a closed cycle. So we move to the last difference which is jet propulsion cycle typically operate at higher pressure ratio often in the range of 10 to 25 but for Brighton cycle Brighton cycle typically operate at lower pressure ratio which is 2 That's all from me, thank you